We're going to get into the word. Turn in your Bibles to James chapter 1. Today we're concluding a series that we've been in just three weeks. Today is the culminating week of this series uh, called Forward. Concluding today, you know, you look around and see everything that's going on in the world and seeing everything that's going on just around us, and it reminds us of our need um, to look up. We need to fix our eyes on Jesus. We need to always fix our eyes on him. But we have to have our mind set on things above, not on things of the earth. And when we look up, what we're going to end up doing is looking in and looking into our own hearts and examining our own hearts. What is the condition of our hearts before God? We need to get serious. If there's ever a time in our lives to be serious about living and living for God, today is the day. We need, to, we need to be serious about our relationship with God. We need to repent of our sins. We need to live right. And uh, the reality is that God could come back, Jesus could come back anytime. I've had more conversations about that in the last few weeks than I probably had in the, a decade before that. How many of you know what I'm talking about? It just causes us to turn our thoughts to that, to say, is this the time? Is this the time? I'm sure all through history, since Jesus went back into heaven, he told us to be looking, to be watching, and to be waiting, and to be ready. So through all of time, there's been events where people said, surely this is, this is it. But as I look at those events, and more time is behind us, I think that we're getting ever closer to that time, and we need to look up. And uh, so here we are going forward to conclude this series called Forward. So we're looking at James chapter 1. Pastor Austin read through some of these verses uh, two weeks ago, uh, but we're going to go back and reread, and I'm just going to take this portion of Scripture, verses 19 to 21, James chapter 1, and this is what he says. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. So get rid of all the filth and the evil in your lives and humbly accept the word that God has planted in your hearts for it has power, it has the power to save your souls. So James introduces this very common proverb with this statement saying, understand this. Maybe in your Bible he says, take note of this or, or pay attention to this because everyone... Everybody, without exception, needs this reminder that we need to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. And I'm just going to look at those three things, and we're going to tack on uh, at the end. We're going to be talking about the Word of God that He has planted in our hearts. And this morning, I want us to really have our, our hearts open, our ears open, to say, God, what is it that you want to speak to me today? And not just so I can be hearing, but so I can be doing. Not just so I can be hearing and know something, but so I can be in the place where God wants me to be. So I can respond in a way that would honor and glorify Him and serve His purpose here in, the, in this world. The first thing that James says is we need to be quick to listen. How many of you are good listeners? How many of you heard me? <laughs> quick to listen. Open our ears. One of the greatest tools, life skills that we can develop is that of listening. James says that we need to be quick to listen. We need to develop this ability to be good listeners. Don't just, don't just set that aside and say, you know what, I'm just not good at that. Yes, you can be. James says right here, we all, he said this, he said, take note of this, you must all, all of us need to be quick to listen. There are two good reasons why listening is an essential spiritual skill. First is because that's how faith comes. Paul said in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing, listening, and hearing by the Word of God. Faith comes from our ability to hear what the Word of God is saying to us. And so this morning, we're all ears, right? We're hearing, we're listening, we're going to be quick to listen. 
the context of this chapter that uh, Paul's writing in Romans chapter 10, certainly we need to always have our ears open to hear. And faith comes by hearing the word of God. And you don't need me to speak it to you. You don't need me to preach it to you because you have a copy of the scriptures. And I, and I hope and pray that you're in the word, that you're listening all the time. Pastor Austin talked about how God speaks to us through the word. He speaks to us through his spirit. That he can illuminate the scriptures and, and he can guide us and direct us if we'll just listen to what he's saying. But in the context of Romans chapter 10, Paul is talking specifically about preaching the word. It's important for us to be part of this. And I know we've been through uh, some crazy times where 11 weeks in a row we weren't meeting here in this building. And so, uh, but all of us had the opportunity to be online and we have people who are still joining us online. And so uh, being part of the word, of the preaching of the word, to listen uh, to what the word is saying to us. But back to what James is talking about, being, a, 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 being quick to listen, both naturally and spiritually. Hearing spiritually brings faith to our lives. The second reason that we need to develop the ability to hear spiritually is because of the way that God speaks. How is it that God speaks to you? First Kings chapter 19, there's a powerful story. It's the prophet Elijah. Elijah has escaped, uh, the, the, he's escaped evil queen Jezebel and he's gone to Mount Horeb, the mountain of God, and he decides to spend the night there in a cave. You're probably familiar with this story. And Elijah was feeling a little bit sorry for himself, and God told him to go outside to the, to the mouth of the cave. And there, Elijah experienced a great wind, and that wind was so powerful that the Bible says that it even split rocks in two on the mountain. And I'm sure that Elijah looked at the wind, this amazing display of power and said, wow, that must be God. God must be in that wind. But the Bible tells us that God wasn't in the wind. And then it's, it records that there was an earthquake. And I'm sure with this earthquake, a whole bunch more rocks uh, broke apart and came off of that mountain. And it got Elijah's attention. And, and probably after that demonstration, he said, that must be God. God must be in the earthquake. But it tells us that he wasn't in the earthquake either. And then it says that there was a fire. And if you've ever seen a big fire, fire can capture your attention. Just sitting around a small campfire, it's mesmerizing. But imagine a large fire at night or, or whatever. It, it just captures your attention. And fire is so strong and so powerful and can be so destructive. But fire can be so good. But he looks at this at this fire, this spectacular fire, and said, surely God's in this fire, but the scripture tells us that God wasn't in the fire. And then it records that Elijah heard a still, small voice. He heard a whisper. And that whisper was God speaking to him. I don't know if you find this amazing, that the God of all power, who created the heavens and the earth, with his words, he spoke and it came to be. Who has all knowledge and wisdom and power and who rules uh, all of eternity. This God speaks in a still small voice. Not in the wind, not in the earthquake, not in a fire, but in a gentle whisper. He doesn't shout. He doesn't roar. Who roars? Who is it that roars? 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be sober and vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a what? A roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. You can see Satan roars and tries to intimidate. But God, who is infinitely more powerful, is the one who whispers. Speaks quietly. And so in the clamor of life, in the world of noise that we live in, how many of you know it's pretty noisy out there? We have to learn to listen for God's voice that often is a whisper. 
Listen to the voice of God. Listen because he's speaking. As we practice and learn to listen to God, it's going to cause us to be a good listener with other people. And if there's ever a time that we live in today, we need to listen. We need to listen to each other. What follows listening is being, uh, we're, we're to be quick to listen and slow to speak. Not speak slowly. Be slow to speak. Take a pause. You know that you don't have to respond like right away. It's okay to, to, to take a minute and process. You know what happens when, when we speak slow and we're, we're quick to listen and we're slow in our speaking? What it says is, I'm listening to what you're saying. I'm processing and pondering what it is that you're saying so that I can so that I can communicate. Sometimes we just respond and we think we know what somebody said, but we didn't, we didn't hear them at all because uh, we, we, our mind went to something, some preconceived idea that we already had when somebody was speaking. We already thought that's what they're talking about, that's what they're doing. And many of us are very good at finishing other people's sentences. That's not being slow to speak. Slow to speak. The Greek philosopher Zeno lived 2,500 years ago, summed up what, Je- what James is talking about here when he wrote that we have one mouth and two ears, and we know this, right? That should give us a fair idea of how much talking we should do compared to how much listening we should do. It's interesting, too, as I think about two ears and one mouth. Our ears are always open, right? Right? This week I'm, I'm looking at, you know, stuff that can get down in your ears. Don't, don't go looking. I'm, I'm, as I'm telling you, don't go looking. Some of you are going to go looking. But there are some videos online of things that come out of people's ears. Yes, ooh. That can plug up our hearing. And we're good about sticking things in our ears anyway, all kinds of devices that go in our ears. So we are plugging up our ears, but our ears naturally are open. Our mouth is naturally open naturally closes. That should tell us something. The average human speaks about 150 to 200 words a minute, but our minds can comprehend and listen to 800 words a minute. It seems that God has designed us in a way that would encourage us to be slow to speak, but quick to listen. If you're like me, um, maybe you wish that life had a control Z button. Those of you that know computers know what I'm talking about. If you, uh, if you don't, aren't familiar with all these hot buttons on your computer, control A selects all of your text, control C copies, control V paste, control X deletes, control Z, what does it do? Anybody know? Undo. Wouldn't it be awesome if life came with a control Z button? How many of you have been in situations where if you, had, if you could hit control Z and just undo what you just said, or maybe what just happened, you would quickly hit, the, hit control Z? Unfortunately, life doesn't come with that. You speak a few careless words and you immediately realize, oops, I shouldn't have said that. It would be awesome to have an undo button. But in life, we can't, we can't do that. The Bible tells us to restrain our lips. I'm going to read a few scriptures for you from Proverbs. Some of them say to shut your mouth, to be honest with you, to not be hasty in our words. Listen to some of the Proverbs that speak about us being slow to speak. Proverbs 10, 19, and I'm going to put the references up here. Uh, If you want to jot those down and go back and read them later, you're sure welcome to. Proverbs 10, 19, too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. That's a New Living Translation, by the way. Proverbs 13, 3, those who control their tongue will have a long life. Opening your mouth can ruin everything. This is from the Bible. Proverbs 17, 27, and 28, a truly wise person uses few words. A person with understanding is even-tempered. Even fools are thought wise when they keep silent. 
Even fools are thought wise when they keep silent. With their mouths shut, they seem intelligent. The great philosopher Mark Twain said, better to remain silent and be thought, of, be thought a fool than to speak and remove all doubt. Sounds kind of like what the writer of the Proverbs is saying. Ecclesiastes 5, 1 and 2. As you enter the house of God, keep your ears open and your mouth shut. We've come today to hear, to listen. It's evil to make mindless offerings to God. Don't, be, don't make rash promises and don't be hasty in bringing matters before God. After all, God is in heaven and you are here on earth, so let your words be few. Verse 3 says, too many words make a fool, make you a fool. Proverbs 29, 20, there is more hope for a fool than someone who speaks without thinking. Proverbs 21, 23, watch your tongue and keep your mouth shut and you will stay out of trouble. There's a lot to say for us to be quiet, to listen, and to be slow to speak. Think before you say it. A lot of our a lot of our talking as we talk about computers, a lot of our talking and speaking today is done with our fingers. And we're so much more quick to say something when we're talking like this in front of a computer screen. But I would challenge you this, be slow to speak. You may you may take I would challenge you take take 15 or 20 minutes. If you feel like you've got to respond to somebody, make that response and let it sit for a few minutes. Go back and read your response before you feel compelled to push the send button. It would save us a lot of trouble. And it would help to be an encouragement to other people. Be slow to speak, be slow to send, be slow to post, be slow to tweet. James is very clear in this that we need to be slow to speak. Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Anger is a big problem in our world. How many of you would agree? There's a lot of anger in the world. We hear about road rage, roid rage, substance abuse, alcohol abuse, all kinds of violence that's happening all over the world, and it's all related to anger. James said this in verse 20, chapter 1, verse 20, human anger doesn't produce the righteousness that God desires. The problem is that when you experience anger, it can seem so rational at the time. You just get this indignation inside of you and, and anger rises up and it makes so much sense, so rational. But then when you calm down and you think back over the things that you said, you probably come to this response, what was I thinking? Why did I say that? You see, anger interferes with our ability to think rationally. In the book of Esther, King Xerxes threw a humongous party. This party lasted for six months. It was a six-month party. And at the end of this time, he decides that he wants to show off his wife, Queen Vashti. He wants to parade her in front of all of these people who have gathered uh, for this party. There was some wine and other things going on. And, and uh, so he sends uh, a message to her, calls her to come and parade in front of all of his guests, and she refuses to come. She refuses to do so, and it says that he became furious and that he burned with anger. How many of you know when you're at that state of mind, it's not a good time to make decisions? But at the advice of those that uh, were around him, he made the decision to remove Vashti as his queen. No longer would she be queen. Fast forward to chapter 2, verse 1, and it says, Later when King Xerxes fury when his fury subsided, he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what he had decreed about her. In his anger, he just said, fine, you're not the queen anymore. But when his anger subsided, he remembered what he had done. At the height of his anger, it was too late because custom was whatever the, queen, whatever the king decreed, it, was, it could never be undone. Just in a moment of rage. I wonder how many of us in a moment... We've said something. We've done something. We've made a decision that maybe didn't affect the rest of our life, but it affected our life and some people around us. I'm sure we all have some kind of regrets, and that's why God tells us to be slow to get angry. 
There is a righteous anger. But that anger has to do with injustice in a biblical sense. There is a, there is a good kind of anger. The Bible talks about Jesus being angry. The Bible talks about God being angry. But the Bible says that in your anger, don't sin. This is the kind of anger. It says, James says, human anger isn't, it doesn't bring about the righteousness that God desires. We're to be slow to get angry. Another reason that he tells us to be slow to be angry is because that's God's nature. And for us to be like God, we have to be slow to be angry. Psalm 103, verse 8, the Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. You see, human anger tends toward less self-control and a greater tendency toward sin. It causes us to speak before we think and ultimately to say things that we're going to later regret. And as much as we want to later excuse ourselves by saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I was just angry, I didn't mean it. That's not, we know that that's not how it works. We can't just get angry and go back and say, I'm sorry. Words are like toothpaste. Once it's out of the tube, there's no getting it back. Once our words are spent, there's no way we can retrieve those. And if you've ever been on the receiving end of someone's careless words and an angry attitude, you know this, that no matter what kind of I didn't mean it speech that you get from them, the damage is still done. It still affects you. Let me give you a few verses from scriptures about being slow to anger. Proverbs 14, 29, people with understanding control their anger. A hot temper shows great foolishness. Psalm 4, 4, don't sin by letting anger control you. Think about it overnight and remain silent. Hey, slow to speak, quick to listen. Proverbs 15, 18, a hot-tempered person stirs up conflict, but the one who is patient calms a quarrel. Proverbs 19, 11, sensible people control their temper. They earn respect by overlooking wrongs. Ecclesiastes 7, 9, do not be quickly provoked in your spirit, for anger resides in the lap of fools. Proverbs 29, 11 says, a fool gives full vent to his spirit, but a wise man quietly holds it back. The question is here, do we want to be foolish or do we want to be wise? The question is, do we want to look like God or do we want to look like the enemy? James says, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. The last thing that he says, verse 21, he concludes by saying, get rid of all filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word planted in you. Get rid of all filth and evil that resides in you and humbly accept the word planted in you. We're to welcome and receive the word into our lives. I hope today your heart is open and receptive. You see, James sees our heart like a garden. Left to itself, it's going to produce only weeds. How many gardeners do we have? How often, Ralph, do you have to weed the garden? Every day? At least. You can pull a weed here and somehow tomorrow there's a different one there. How does that happen? It takes us tending to the garden. James says our heart is like a garden. He tells us to pull out the weeds, to get rid of all the, the, the moral filth and the evil that resides in us, to prepare the soil for this implanted word of God. God's word, he wants, it's like a garden and it needs to receive the seed. You go back to Matthew chapter 13, Jesus did this, the parable of the soils. I preached on this back in January. Go back and listen to that. But it all has to do with the soil of your heart. It takes some tending to. Jesus said to religious leaders in John 8, 37, who were trying to, they were trying to kill Jesus. They were trying to get rid of him. And he said to them, you're trying to kill me because there's no room in your hearts for my word. There's no room in your heart. The word of truth wasn't implanted in them. The reality is that these leaders, these religious leaders knew their Bibles better than anyone else. But Jesus said, 
You're trying to kill me because there's no room in your hearts for my word. The word had no place in them. It wasn't implanted in them. And the reason why is because they were too full of themselves to receive the word. So the question that I want to ask all of us this morning is, is there room in your heart for God and for his word? Do we make room for him in our lives or are we too full of ourselves? It's a real thing. Jesus said in John 14, 2 and 3, my father's house has many rooms, many mansions, many dwelling places. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. Isn't that awesome to know that Jesus is preparing a place for every person who is a follower of Jesus? He's making room. He's preparing a place. I kind of like the King James Version. He's, he's, he's got a mansion, and we sang about that this morning. About the mansion, the place that he has prepared for us. So here's the question. What if God gave you room in heaven in direct proportion to the room that you give him in your life here on earth? What if God gave you room in heaven in direct proportion to the amount of room that you give him in your life here on earth? Are we so full of ourselves that there's no room for God and for his word? Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart do what? It's a Christmas carol. You remember that? It's July. Let every heart prepare him room. You see, seeds can't find life in soil that doesn't welcome it. And so the question is today, what's the condition of your heart? What is the soil of your heart? How do, we, how do we prepare the soil of our hearts for God's word? The first thing is that we confess our sins and ask Jesus to forgive us. We take care of that hard, junky, um, weedy stuff that's in our heart. He says, get rid of all the evil and the moral filth. Get rid of that so that you can humbly accept the word that God planted in you so that we can receive the good seeds. 1 John 1, 9 says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Ask him to come in to forgive and clean up our hearts. He's faithful to do that. The second thing, Jeremiah 4, 3 says, plow up the, the hard ground of your hearts. We need to plow up the ground in our hearts. We need to prepare some good soil. Get the weeds out, get the rocks out, get all the junk out, and soften up the soil. All, those of you that are gardeners, most of you probably have tillers, right? You got to turn the soil and get the soil loose so that it can receive the seed. Because if it's just hard packed dirt, there's no way the seed's just going to sit on the top and it's not going to do anything. If God's word that he has implanted in our hearts is going to take root, then we've got to turn up the soil. We've got to plow the hard ground of our hearts. And third is have an attitude of humility. Humility is the opposite of anger. When you humbly accept the word of God, receive the word of God with humility. You receive it. You don't argue with it. Sometimes... God's word, what he's speaking into our hearts, sometimes it hurts. How many of you have been there? It's hard to hear. But don't argue with it. Honor it as God's word. Let it shape you. Let it transform. Let it change you into the person that he wants you to be. It's easy to say, be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. The only way we can really truly do that is through the word of God that's implanted in our hearts to humbly receive that word. I want to ask you to bow your hearts with your James says be quick to listen with your head bowed, your eye closed take this posture, God you're speaking to me, what do you want to say to me 
here I am and I'm listening. What is it that you want to say to me? And I think sometimes in our prayers, we think that praying is us doing all the talking. But I think a greater and more effective time of prayer often is just being still before the Lord. I'd much rather him talk and speak and me listen to what he has to say than just to get stuff off my chest. Listen to what he's saying. This morning, if you struggle with anger, this morning, if you struggle with a little bit of fear and anxiety with what uh, is happening in your life and going on in the world, I would implore you to open your hearts to him, to take time in your life every day to listen to what God is speaking to you. Let the word take root in your heart. Good seed in good soil produces good fruit. Good seed, the word of God, in good soil, your prepared, open, soft heart can receive that seed so that it can produce fruit in your life. How many of you this morning would say, Pastor Jeff, there's something in this message today. There's something that the Holy Spirit is speaking to me. And today you're saying just by a raised hand, I'm responding to what, what God's speaking to me. Something in this message today that I needed to hear. Your raised, your raised hand doesn't change, it doesn't change things. What needs to happen from this point is that you continue to listen and you follow through and do what he says. Is there anyone this morning, you're here in the sanctuary, you're watching online, and you'd say, your heart has been hard, you're struggling with just junk and things in the world, and your heart has gotten really hard, and you know it's one of those hearts like James is talking about, that we need to get rid of the, the filth and the, and, the, and the junk that's there so that God can plant his word in our hearts so that he can change us and make us who he wants us to be. If today you're, you're saying, I don't know Jesus, I'm not living for him, he's not the Lord of my life, it's as simple as saying, Jesus, come into my heart. And you could pray a prayer like this, Jesus, I open my heart to you. Reveal in me anything that's wrong. Forgive me of my sin. I'm sorry for doing my own thing and going my own way. I make you Lord of my life. You be in charge. And I'll be quick to listen. Slow to speak. And with God's word and his spirit in our life, we humble ourselves before him. I believe the anger will begin to dissipate and just fall away. Father, this morning for every person in this room that responded by saying you're speaking something into my heart, that you would give them the next steps. As they listen and open their heart to you, open their ears to you, that you would give them the next steps of what they need to do in this, in this journey, in this life of following after truth and following after you. Thank you. You're such a faithful God. You love us so much that even while we sin, even though we sin, you're faithful to forgive us when we confess our sins and you purify us, you clean us from all the filth and the junk. Thank you for loving us, for saving us. Give us a new sense of purpose as we move forward. May we be reminded that we are to be quick to listen. The first thing we do is listen, slow to speak slow to become angry. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Today, if you um, made, made a decision in your heart, maybe it was to open your heart to Christ and to, to follow him, uh, let us know. You can stop by the Fresh Start Center if you're here. If you're watching online, just send an email. You can send it to me, jeff at newhope.church. 
And uh, we want to be able to come alongside you, help you, give you materials that will help you in this journey. We're here for each other. We need to encourage each other. There is so much that we need to, to do in the, in the world that, that we live in. Rather than us being affected by the world, I want us to affect the world. And we can do that if we're listening to God and we're responding to him because part of listening is hearing and then being obedient to do. That's what we need to do. Let God's spirit, his power, his purpose, all of that be inside of us so that it comes out of us. That's my desire for all of us today, for us as a church, for each of us as individuals, that we would be a representation of God's love. Would you stand with me this morning? We're not going to sing a song. We're just going to listen to Eric play for a little while. Thank you for playing. No words, because I want you to listen. I just want you to listen. Not just come into church. Did you like that scripture that says, come into his sanctuary and open your ears to listen and shut your mouths? That's what we need to do, a posture before God. Let's do that with other people too. Let's truly care, love, and listen.